This is how you can upgrade your 2013 Trashcan Mac Pro to the Max DAO configuration. What's up guys, Fabria and welcome to Shades of Tech. In the past videos we talked about why we got this 2013 Trashcan Mac Pro, we compared it to the maxed out 2013 iMac and we show you the raw performance of the maxed out 12 core upgrade. But in this video we'll focus more on how you can upgrade this Trashcan Mac Pro with CPU, SSD and RAM. Let's go! You'll just need a few Apple screwdrivers from T5 to T10 a spudger and some arctic silver cleaner and purifier and of course some thermal grizzly thermal paste also in this video we'll upgrade this 2013 6.1 trashcan mac pro with an intel core e5 2697 v2 12 core 24 threads and 64 gigs of 1866 MHz DDR3 memory and 1 terabyte of WC or approx to NVMe SSD. And as always, I'll leave all the Prado link in the description and a step-by-step -step guide by iFixit that I followed and found very useful. But before attempting, be sure to discharge all the static search and press for 10 seconds the power button after disconnecting the power cord. The first thing to do is to unlock the metal cover and remove the outer case. This part is very well engineered. The lock switch is neat and the sliding is super satisfying. The thing I love about this Mac in terms of upgradability is that after literally 5 seconds you are already able to upgrade both the storage and the RAM. This is intended to be and it's so beautiful. Unlike the upgrade we made on the 2013 27 inch iMac that wasn't as easy. You'll find one of the original Apple SSD on one of the GPUs and removing it is just one screw and it will be released. Pay attention that it's not an NVMe M.2 port, you can find an SSD with the right compatibility on OWC.com like the OWC Aura Pro X2 1TB. But don't worry, you can use also an NVMe M.2 SSD. You just need to buy a cheap $10 adapter. I tested it as well and it works. So it's just up to you. Upgrading the RAM is even easier. There are two slots on each side for a total of four slots. Just release the mechanism and open the lateral edge. Then you can insert the four 16 gig each very tall dims and achieve 64 gig of 1866 MHz DDR3 RAM. It's the most RAM I have ever used on Mac and I can barely use half under load. So it's really impressive. But now it's time to upgrade the CPU. It's a little bit longer but no more than 30 to 40 minutes including the reassembly. The first part you'll have to remove is the top fan assembly. Unscrew 5 T10 screws all around the cylinder and you'll be able to tilt it. But pay very much attention not to remove it because it's still attached. Before removing you'll need to unscrew two points that lock the fan power supply. Now you can gently disconnect the fan assembly from the Mac. I was really disappointed when I saw my fan literally packed with dust. So I carefully clean it with an air dryer. So a tremendous improvement in thermal performance after cleaning. Now it's time for the lower case. You'll have to put your Mac upside down and then remove again five T10 screws all around the cylinder. Now you can remove it and expose the bottom of the Mac. In the, sky. the interconnector board is connected to the 2MD Fire Pro GPUs with a spudger you'll have to gently disconnect both of them. Take your time and make sure you don't damage any pin. Then remove the two screws that lock it to the motherboard. Now the interconnector board is still connected by some PCIe connections and gently separate it from the motherboard. Lift it up and it will be still attached by a flat connection ribbon. So don't throw it away with a spudger disconnected. And this is the interconnector board. Now you'll have to turn the Mac Pro upside down again. Then you'll have to remove the power supply assembly. 
There are two T5 screws, one on each side. But this will release the power supply cage. By removing it, you are exposing internal components, so be careful not to touch any exposed component or circuit. Handle it and the board only on the sides. There are still four T8 screws that keep it attached to the heat sink. When you remove the last one, the power supply is loose, so pay attention you don't drop it, it's very delicate. Then you'll have to disconnect the motherboard from the huge and heavy heat sink. On the top there are two T8 screws, but be gentle because this is a very delicate connection. And finally you'll start to see the CPU. It's very well tied to the motherboard and the heat sink with a total of 8 points that are very hard to unscrew. Start with the external 4 and use a cross pattern to remove them. They go all through so when you remove the last one the motherboard is free. Then remove the last 4 internal screws, again a couple of minutes, really strong screws. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand to the fire. But it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you As you can see, my thermal paste was very dirty So I used a soft microfiber cloth and Arctic Silver cleaner to clean it <laughs> I1620 V2, 4 core 8 threads, and then clean the heat sink copper plate as well. Again, it's super dirty. I clean all the black plate to improve the thermals. Then we installed an Intel Xeon 2697 V2, 12 core 24 threads. To know more about the performance improvement, check the dedicated video with full benchmark testing. Before we apply thermal paste, I used some Arctic Silver purifier to make the surface ready. I applied it on the heat sink and on the CPU upper part. Then I put the CPU holder in place, turned the motherboard and started to screw the four internal points. I found them even harder to screw in. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only th then applied some thermal grizzly thermal paste now that the CPU is blocked. But the thermal grids in my opinion is the best for thermal properties. I used a cross and point pattern, not very beautiful but I covered all the important parts and also I was running out of thermal paste. Then I put everything together. The process was very straightforward and very easy for me and the Mac Pro turned on very fast and works perfectly. I've been using it for almost 7 months after the upgrade without any problem. We are here. So, this was it, my take on the 12 core 2013 Mac Pro a great. Let me know what you think and which used Mac you would buy. 
and also stay tuned for the 2009 Cheese Grader Mac Pro comparison with this 12 core. So thanks so much for watching me so far, be sure to like or dislike this video, comment and subscribe for more videos. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!